Hi, and welcome to this presentation on research basics. Uh, just a couple of quick little things. Uh, this is not a presentation about how to write a research paper. Um, we will do that in composition two. Um, this is just the very basic directions as to how to incorporate source material and quoted source material uh, into your essays. At the end, uh, there is going to be a website which will give you more information if you do or are faced with a research paper, um, it will give you some information as to how to, to kind of navigate that. And I'll, um, again, give you that at the end. Um, but this is for use with one essay, the persuasive essay, where you need to incorporate um, direct quotes to back up your opinion. So to put um, source material into your essay, um, this is, there are about four steps um, that you will need to use in order to do this successfully. The first one is to find credible sources. Credible sources are those um, that are appropriate for academic arguments and academic essays. As you all know, um, I could or you could write something online and put it out there, um, but it may not be credible. You might not know a whole lot about a topic. You might have an opinion, um, but you may not be an expert, and so it's not terribly credible. So what we're looking for are those more credible sources, especially if we're going to be incorporating them into an academic argument. So credible sources follow that list of things that are, are, are listed there. They're scholarly, the author is generally an expert. There probably is some author information on there somewhere so that you can take a look at who is the author of this particular item. Um, articles a lot of times are reviewed by peers or by editors. Uh, you may have um, and a website that ends in .gov, .edu, or .org. Those are probably 95% of the time credible. Um, the .coms, there's nothing wrong with them. You just have to be careful that they're not trying to sell you something. You have to be a little more leery about those. Um, but like a time.com or cnn.com, obviously those are credible, um, so they are able to be used. Uh, your sources should be unbiased if at all possible. Um, if you're using a persuasive essay though, or writing a persuasive essay, um, sometimes your sources will be biased so that you can show one side or the other. Um, and so kind of be careful of that. Lastly is about Wikipedia. Wikipedia is actually a very helpful site. It gives you a great overview of topics, probably lists some resources at the end. Um, the thing that you have to be careful of is you don't want to cite it in an academic paper. Um, maybe those resources at the bottom that they give you can be um, cited if you find some really good things on there, but use it as a, a way to get an overview. Don't cite it in an academic paper. All right, step two is to understand the purpose of quotes. Um, there are four reasons why people choose to integrate quotes into their um, essays. Uh, number one, they may provide background or context to help the reader understand the topic or the argument. So if your topic is maybe um, more difficult to understand, you might choose a uh, a quote to help your reader figure that out. More likely though, it's going to be um, either numbers two, three, or four. It's going to supply evidence or assist in developing an argument. It's going to provide an expert or authority opinion or some support from an expert or an authority. That gives you credibility as an author. Uh, your opinion is great, but if an expert believes what you do, that's even better. Lastly, it may present the counter argument or oppose the thesis. You might think, why would I do that? Um, but the reason might be is maybe it's said really eloquently or you want to debunk what everybody else is saying um, and kind of refute that. So that might be another reason why you incorporate a quote. Step three is actually incorporating the quotes. So you found your quote, now you just need to put it into your essay. And there's a couple of things to keep in mind. The sources or the quotes need to enhance and support your ideas as an author. If obviously they don't support your, your thoughts, you don't want to include them. So make sure that they are relevant. Um, these quotes need to be integrated within the paper. And so because of that, you'll embed the quote into the paragraph. It almost should seem as if your quote kind of works seamlessly. Your thoughts are integrated in with the quote and, and you can tell the difference because there's some, you know, in-text citation type of stuff happening. Um, but really, the words should kind of just flow seamlessly. You also want to avoid orphan or hit and run quotes. And that's the idea that it's not embedded. Maybe you just stick a quote in, 
You don't explain it. You don't introduce it. It's just sitting there all by itself. And the same is true, you know, with a hit and run quote. There's just, here it is. And the author or the reader, excuse me, the reader has to make sense of what that quote means. The author didn't do it for the reader. And so that's um, problematic. How do you do it? All right. So the first thing you're going to do is just like every other paragraph, you're going to begin with a topic sentence. Um, so alert the reader as to what it is that they're going to be reading about in this paragraph. So provide us with the overall main idea. Then you want to introduce the source. If this is the first time that they're encountering this source, you may need to provide some information about them, maybe their credentials, uh, maybe something about their background. After you've introduced the source, you want to use a signal phrase that's going to introduce the source material. So all of your quotes in this paper need to begin this way. So you'll see we have the author's first and last name. You could just use last name if you wanted to. Followed by the year um, that, that this information was published. Then here's his credentials. So John Bodie, a researcher at the University of Kentucky, that's the credential. Here's your signal, signal phrase. Signal um, phrases are the verbs that are going to be used to, in, to introduce your material. And you'll see that there's a whole list of them down here. Um, those are the verbs. And the stronger the verb, the better. So are they suggesting? Are they stating? Are they arguing? A lot of times they're not just saying something that's kind of boring, um, but asserts or confirms, rejects. Those are, are a little more specific. And then you'll notice that the quote happens here. So that's the beginning. Um, it does suggest that you use only the last name of the author. So don't use the first name of the author. Um, it's okay to do it on the first one, um, but the ones preceding or, or the ones after that one uh, should not have the first name listed. Now that we have the author introduced, um, we're going to actually use the source material. So here's how you do that. And it's a little um, difficult, but I'll provide a, an example on the next slide. Number one, you're going to include quotes or put quotes around the words that are taken directly from the text. And you know that. So if you're using a direct quote, you're putting quotation marks around what's being taken. You are then going to use what's called an in-text citation. So the source is introduced by a signal phrase, that's that verb, that includes the last name of the author followed by the date in parentheses. And the date will be found in the, the information at the beginning where you find all of your source material, so publication date, um, publisher, author, text, title, etc. And there was an example of that on that preceding page. So we used the name of the author followed by the date, and that was in parentheses. The material being cited then is followed by a page number in parentheses, unless there aren't any page numbers. Websites won't have page numbers. Um, books will, magazines probably will, but if it's something found online, a lot of times you won't have page numbers. So if there are no page numbers, you can't include them in the parentheses at the end. Then what's important is that the last name of the author matches an entry on the references page, which is going to be found at the end of your document. If there is no author, then you're going to use the title of the work, um, and, and that will help. It's kind of used as a cross-reference um, method. Here's your example, probably much easier than that explanation from the previous slide. So here we have the author, followed by the year of publication in parentheses, and your signal phrase. So Bell 2010 reported, comma follows that, introduces the quote. Quotations have been placed around the sentence. And we end the quote here. This did have a page number. So in parentheses, we see the P.39 to 40 period goes at the end. Period does not go here. Period goes at the end to show that this came from pages 39 and 40. Then, as I mentioned that cross-reference idea before, we have Bell 2010 and we have Bell in the, the um, list of references. So these two match up. Now again, if it wasn't an author, you wouldn't be able to use an author here. You might have to use the title of the article. So if you use the title of the article because there is no author, you put title here, and then title would go here. Please note that this is a citation for a very basic entry. If you're citing something with more authors, there will be variations. If there's no author, there's variations. 
Um, and I'll show you in the text of that website um, more information on that. All right, here is step three. Um, once you have chosen your quote from a credible source and you know its purpose and you have kind of introduced it, you've given some of the credentials, you've included the year of publication, you've quoted it, you've placed your quotes around what's been taken, you included page numbers if, if needed, now you need to analyze. And why would we analyze? We talked before about that orphan quote or that hit and run quote. We don't want readers to come up with the reason why a quote was used. We want you to do that as the author. And so when you analyze, you're going to tell the readers why a quote was chosen. Um, you're going to talk about how the quote is relevant to the topic, how it supports your main idea. Uh, it's going to be your thoughts about how that quote and why that quote was chosen. Here's an example of that. So we start with, in this case, it's a little um, organized a little differently. We started with the, the uh, signal phrase. So according to, here's the author, here's the year of publication. So very important information, um, the author, this time it's a society. We have the year of publication and then we have the signal phrase. All before that comma, we have the quote in parentheses and it's these two and a half lines. We end the quote. There were no page numbers, so I can probably assume that it was an online article. And then here's the analysis. And if you notice, the analysis is just, you know, a couple of, of actually, it's just even one sentence. The results of student-centered learning have been positive, not only for academic achievement, but also for student self-esteem, because students actively participate in the process of learning. And so it connects back to the author's own words. You don't just want to have a quote and leave it be. Um, but to provide some analysis. So that's one way in which this one um, was done. Step four, last step, uh, is creating that reference page. So every different source that you use, source being book, magazine, website, any of the uh, different types of sources you might have and that are quoted within your essay, need to be cited on what's called the references page. Uh, an APA, which is what we're using, um, this references page is a listing of every source that you used in your essay. If you consulted it and you didn't use it, you don't have to worry about putting it on the references page. But every time that you cited something in your essay, there should be an entry. Um, if you've used the same source a couple of times, it's still only listed once on your references page. It needs to be its own page and at the end of the essay, and it is simply titled References. So it gets its own page, it has its own title. Um, this website is the Purdue Online Writing Lab, and it's their website about APA style. And I'm just going to show you what this looks like. This is the website that I said if you wanted more information, you could go here. Um, but you are want, going to want to navigate to this website to do your references page. And I'll show you how it's set up here. So I'm taking you to the very basic um, APA style. So if you click on this link, it gives you a whole bunch of information. And it's really quite long. And again, this is if you are doing a research paper. You might want to take you know, a closer look at this. You're going to want to pay particular attention if you need more information on in-text citations. You'll find it here. Um, I'm kind of guiding you to the reference list. Um, these are the basic rules. You can look through those uh, as you need to. Um, but you'll want to look at this reference list in terms of these different types of sources. So if you're interested, Let's say you have a single author. This is the formula that you will use. You put in the last name of the author, um, initials, year of publication, title um, of the article. This is the title of the book. And where it comes from in terms of pages, this is probably um, the edition type. You know, if you have two authors, it looks a little bit different, three authors, um, etc. If I click on each one of these links, here's the, the idea if I used an article. If I used a book, and it gives me every imaginable type of um, source I might have. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask because it can get a little bit confusing. Um, but using this list, kind of navigate through to find out what your source should look like on your references page. And I will say to pay particular attention to both capitalization and your punctuation marks because um, it's picky. So you'll want to make sure that you can follow the formula. If you have any questions about any of this information, please don't hesitate to ask. I will be more than happy to help.